هذا جدا You're watching the English newscast on Future Television. I'm Yumna Nofal, and these are today's top stories. The Nami landfill in the south stops receiving Lebanon's waste at midnight with the end of a two months time period that was set by the cabinet to reopen the landfill to receive the country's accumulating waste. At least 50 fighters, two civilians killed in clashes between rival anti regime groups east of Syria's capital. And Amnesty International accuses Yemeni rebels of carrying out a brutal campaign of arbitrary arrest and torture of opponents since they seized the capital Sana'a in 2014. The Nami landfill in the south is to stop receiving Lebanon's waste by midnight with the end of a two-month time period that was set by the cabinet to reopen the landfill coming to an end. At midnight, the landfill will close its doors after receiving around 900,000 tons of waste that accumulated in several regions since the eruption of the crisis in July 2015, according to Agriculture Minister Akram Shayib, who followed up on the government's emergency plan. Although preparations continue to set up landfills at Burj Hamoud and the Costa Brava site in Khalde to resolve the long-standing waste management crisis, fears have emerged that the plan may not be complete by the due date and that waste might accumulate on the streets once again. Hezbollah reportedly is welcoming the position of Lebanon's central bank governor, which is calling on banks to consult with him before closing the group's accounts in accordance to the U.S. sanctions law. Central bank governor Riyad Salemi called on banks to offer justification within a 30-day period if they want to suspend the accounts affiliated with Hezbollah. However, he said this measure will exclude those individuals or companies blacklisted by the U.S. Treasury Department. The Lebanese newspaper Jumharuya is reporting that Hezbollah sources have said while it did not see it as a solution to the U.S. sanctions law, it was a positive step. Finance Minister Ali Hassan Khalil said that he was comfortable with Salam's statements as well. At least 50 fighters and two civilians were killed in clashes between rival anti-regime groups east of Syria's capital, according to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights. Jaish al-Islam, or as they are also known, Army of Islam, has been locked in clashes with rival factions led by al-Qaeda Syrian affiliate in the opposition stronghold of eastern Ghouta. Observatory head Rami Abdurrahman said nearly three weeks of fighting had killed more than 500 fighters and a dozen civilians. One of the slain civilians has been identified as the only specialist gynecologist still practicing in eastern Ghouta. The Saudi-backed faction is one of the key rebel players in the High Negotiations Committee, which represents Syria's opposition in the UN-backed peace talks. But Jaish al-Islam has recently been challenged by Faylak al-Rahman and Jaish al-Fustat, both led by a Nusra Front, Syria's al-Qaeda affiliate. Amnesty International is accusing Yemeni rebels of carrying out a brutal campaign of arbitrary arrests and torture of opponents since they seized the capital, Sana'a, back in 2014. Shia Houthis, who are backed by troops loyal to ousted President Ali Abdullah Saleh, have carried out a wave of arrests of opponents, arbitrarily seizing critics at gunpoint and subjecting some to enforced disappearance, the rights watchdog said. Amnesty in a statement said a speed of arbitrary arrests, disappearances and torture by Houthi forces to persecute opponents was part of a chilling campaign to quash dissent. Its report named Where Is My Father? Detention and Disappearance in Houthi-Controlled Yemen was based on detailed examination of 60 cases of detention in Taiz and Hudaida. The warring parties at talks in Kuwait have discussed a deal to release half of the detainees and prisoners they hold before the start of the Muslim holy fasting month of Ramadan in early June. The United States Senate passed legislation that would allow families of September 11 victims to sue the government of Saudi Arabia, rejecting the fierce objections of a U.S. ally and setting Congress on a collision course with the Obama administration. The Justice Against Sponsors of Terrorism Act, approved by vote, voice vote, has triggered a threat from Riyadh to pull billions of dollars from the U.S. economy if the bill is enacted. The legislation sponsored by Senators John Cornyn, a Republican from Texas, and Chuck Schumer, a Democrat from New York, gives victims' families the right to sue in U.S. court for any role the elements of the Saudi government may have played in the 2001 attacks that killed thousands in New York City, the Washington, D.C. area, as well as Pennsylvania. 
Relatives of September 11 victims have urged the Obama administration to declassify and release U.S. intelligence that allegedly discusses possible Saudi involvement in the attacks. Coming up next, Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump talks to Megyn Kelly in their first encounter since their clash. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching the 1620 o'clock news here on Future Television. Turkey's ruling party is to meet to announce a candidate to replace outgoing Prime Minister Ahmed Davutoglu, who is stepping down after a power struggle with President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. According to initial indications, Transport Minister Binali Yildirim, a close ally of Erdogan, has emerged as the clear favorite to replace Davutoglu as chairman of the ruling Justice and Development Party and Prime Minister. The candidate should then be approved as the new AKP, AKP leader by an extraordinary Congress of the party on Sunday. Erdogan will then give the new AKP leader the mandate to serve as Prime Minister early next week, after which a new cabinet will be announced. According to Turkish media reports, Yildirim's name emerged as the overwhelming favorite in meetings this week of regional AKP officials. The Maldives are joining its key financial backer, Saudi Arabia, in cutting diplomatic ties with Iran, accusing it of undermining peace and security in the Gulf region. The Maldives foreign ministry said policies that Iran were pursuing in the Middle East were detrimental to peace and security in the region without giving further details. In a statement issued late Tuesday, the ministry said it was severing ties because stability in the Gulf was also linked to stability, peace and security of the Maldives. The politically troubled Indian Ocean Archipelago officially established diplomatic ties with Iran in 1975, although neither has an embassy or consulate in the other's country. The Maldives has tarnished its reputation as an upmarket honeymoon destination in recent years because of prolonged political unrest and a crackdown on opponents. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump struck a conciliatory tone in an interview broadcast as he spoke to Fox News Channel anchor Megyn Kelly in their first encounter since they clashed at a 2015 debate. Their quarrel began in August when, during a Fox News-hosted Republican debate, Trump blasted Kelly over questions she posed to him regarding his history with women. Take a look. Uh, absolutely, I have regrets. I don't think I want to discuss what the regrets are, but absolutely, I could have done certain things differently. I could have maybe used different language uh, in a couple of instances. But overall, I, you know, I have to be very happy with the outcome. And I think if I didn't conduct myself in the way I've done it, I don't think I would have been successful, actually. If I were soft, if I were, you know, presidential, okay, presidential. It's, in a way, it's a bad word because there's nothing wrong with being presidential. But if I would not have fought back the way I fought back, I don't think I would have been successful. No. I don't view myself as that. I mean, I view myself as a person that, like everybody else, is fighting for survival. I, that's all I view myself as. And I really view myself now as somewhat of a messenger. You know, this is a, this is a massive thing that's going on. Mm -hmm. These are millions and millions of people that have been disenfranchised from this country. I was in front of a group the other day, 25,000, at least 25,000 people. The place was going crazy. And I said, I'm like the messenger. And I have fans, you probably learned, and I didn't do this for this reason, but when you and I were having our little difficulty, um, you probably had some pretty nasty tweets sent your way. I, I don't want to say, but I've heard that. I don't want that to happen, but I have fans, they really love... We have an unbelievable bond. We have an but unbelievable you retweet some of those. Not just the fans. Yeah, but not the more nasty ones. You would be amazed at the ones I don't retweet. Bimbo? Uh, well, there was a retweet, yeah. Did I say that? Many times. Ooh, okay. Excuse me. <laughs> What do you think with, I mean... Not the most horrible thing, you know, again, politically, not the most... <laughs> over your life, Megan, you've been called a lot worse, is that right? Wouldn't you say, you know, you've had a life that's not been that easy, and... It's not about me. It's not, it's not about me. It's about no, the, no, the messaging to, no, no. to young girls and yeah. to but again, other it's, women. It's a certain amount of fighting back. You know, it's, it's a modern-day form of fighting back. I mean, it really is, but... Um, You're going to stop that as president? Well, I'm going to stop it about you now because <laughs> I, I think I like our relationship right now, so I'm certainly not going to do it with you. Yeah, I, I think Now so. you have my I, cell I phone number. That is actually I much did. more efficient. You gave me your cell phone And number. you promise you would not use it for evil. I don't know. I promise. I promise. I, you'll never see that. I will say this. If I don't go all the way and if I don't win, I will consider it to be a total and complete waste of time, energy, and money. 
Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling received the Penn Allen Foundation Literary Service Award in New York and used her acceptance speech to deliver a message of tolerance. The English author used U.S. presidential candidate Donald Trump to make her point. Rowling is responsible for the Harry Potter series, which has been published in 79 languages, over 200 territories, and spawned eight films and three theme parks. Actress Sarah Jessica Parker presented her with the award and credited her with changing the landscape of children's literature forever and for the better. I am presenting J.K. Rowling with the 2016 Penn Allen Award. And I think there can be no mistake in declaring that J.K. Rowling changed the landscape of children's literature forever and for the better with her introduction of Harry Potter to the world. Speaking personally, I have very little to complain about where my freedom of expression is concerned. I was once confronted by a Christian fundamentalist in a toy shop here in New York. I had no idea the phrase, I'm praying for you, could sound so intimidating. Of course, I can afford to take these things lightly, protected as I am by citizenship of a liberal nation where freedom of expression is a fundamental right. My critics are at liberty to claim that I'm trying to convert children to Satanism, and I'm free to explain that I'm exploring human nature and morality, or to say you're an idiot, <laughs> depending on which side of the bed I got out of that day. Only last year, we saw an online petition to ban Donald Trump from entry to the UK. It garnered half a million signatures. <laughs> Just a moment. <laughs> now, I find almost everything that Mr. Trump says objectionable. I consider him offensive and bigoted, but he has my full support to come to my country and be offensive and bigoted there. This marks the end of our bulletin for today. Now for a reminder of our top stories. NAMI Landfill in the South stops receiving Lebanon's waste at midnight with an end of a two-month month time period that was set by the cabinet. At least 50 fighters, two civilians killed in clashes between rival anti-regime groups east of Syria's capital. And Amnesty International accuses Yemeni rebels of carrying out brutal campaigns of arbitrary arrests and torture of opponents since they seized Sana'a in 2014. Your Wednesday headlines live on Future Television. Catch us again tomorrow for all the latest. Have a good night.